you, Luca. Welcome back. <laughs> uh, Luca will try to make us understand what blockchain technology is, how it works, mm -hmm. and uh, mm, uh, its potential impact, probably. So, if you have some question, don't hesitate to raise your hand and ask Luca. So, for this purpose, Luca will deliver a clear, probably not too technical presentation. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> of one of the most important uh, um, technology mm -hmm. and uh, transformational uh, tool, I think. Yes, it is. Probably um, one of the most uh, misunderstood technology of our times. Uh, and it's difficult to catch it uh, at all. Uh, yeah. So, um, the very first question is, uh, what's blockchain mm -hmm. and uh, what's its connection with Bitcoin? Perfect, fantastic. So. Um, blockchain is a distributed database that uh, um, is at the base at Bitcoin because it is uh, the tool that Bitcoin uses to verify the transactions. Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency and uh, um, it is based on uh, uh, virtual registrations of assets. The assets in Bitcoins are the transactional money. So um, to guarantee integrity of these transactions and to verify that uh, each sender is effectively a person who has sent an amount of money to another person, um, Satoshi Nakamoto, the inventor, the creator of Bitcoin, programmed this algorithm that is named blockchain, um, in which uh, each transaction is registered into different databases, so there is no one central database. Mm -hmm. In fact, one attribute of uh, one principle about blockchain is the distribution. Uh, it's not centralized into one institution, mm -hmm. but it's peer to peer, as you said before. Okay. Uh, so um, each of the peer, and a peer can be you, you, any one of us, if we download a software from Bitcoin that is named a node. So, your computer with this software acts as a node of the entire network of the blockchain. And your computer receives all the transactions that are being made from anyone and stores it into its own chain. Then, to verify the um, integrity of the transaction, uh, the software, the client software, for example, if I'm sending uh, 10 euros uh, to you, mm -hmm. I own uh, 10, uh, not 10 euros, 10 bitcoins. Okay. That is an, a huge amount, but imagine yeah. for simplicity. Um, if I send it to you, um, my software needs to contact each of the peers that mm -hmm. he knows to transcribe that I have sent 10 bitcoins to you and you to verify that effectively I send uh, 10 bitcoins only to you and not uh, even to uh, someone of them, you can contact the other peers where I sent the transaction and you ask them, Luca, uh, did Luca have uh, effectively mm -hmm. 10 bitcoins uh, in its own pocket? They will say yes, it had, so the transaction is valid. So I think it's also important to improve the trust, uh, accountability, Absolutely. And transparency, probably. Sure, that's why blockchain exists. Uh, here uh, I, um, I can show you a video that simplifies a lot the approach uh, um, to understand how Bitcoin, how blockchain works. We're going to do this in a very visual way, though. We're going to make it very easy to understand by stepping through uh, the key pieces of what a blockchain is in a visual way. So the video uh, is uh, a quarter of an hour long. So um, probably I will um, put an introduction of the author, but then I will stop into some uh, screens and explain you um, what is going to happen. So this is the but introduction. Before we get started, we need to take a look at this thing that we call a SHA-256 hash. Okay, and a hash, this is, this is one of them right here. Hash looks like a bunch of random numbers. And essentially what it is, it's a fingerprint of some digital data. And it just so happens it's a fingerprint of whatever I type in this box. So if I type my name, Anders, into this box, you see that the hash has changed. As a matter of fact... So this is pretty easy. 
uh, the hash is uh, just a summary of what you are writing uh, into a text box. A hash can be created uh, from a file, from a text, from an image, mm -hmm. from anything that is uh, uh, codified. Um, that Defined. can be codified uh, into yeah. a digital way. Okay. Uh, so this is the base of um, blockchain because uh, any block contains uh, its own content, for example the data, uh, handers, its uh, um, hash and the hash of the, pre at the previous uh, block. In fact if you look at this uh, example, this is the demo of the same author for example, if you look, these are three uh, blocks and the entire um, row is a chain. This is a chain composed by five blocks. So here we have the first block in which, for example, in a uh, um, Bitcoin transaction, we can see the, um, the ID of uh, the sender. For example, my ID is, uh, for simplicity, one. Uh, gives, uh, I don't know, 10, uh, Bitcoins to two. That is Francesca, for example. Um, you can see that this block and the, the following ones are now red. Why? Um, before I explain this, uh, uh, have a look at the hash and uh, the previous hash. The previous hash here is obviously zero because this is the first block of our chain. So. Um, to mm, make the background become green again and green means that the block is coherent with itself um, we apply a process that is named mining the mining process is a process that um, changes this number that is uh, an arbitrary number that uh, uh, is responsible for um, making the block have uh, an hash that begins uh, with that begins uh, with four zeros so this is uh, just uh, um, a conceptualization that satoshi nagamoto uh, made to differentiate uh, uh, bitcoin hashes from uh, generic hashes but the hash can be anything so if you apply this process uh, the block is coherent with itself uh, and Banally, the background becomes uh, green. But uh, what's the power of Bitcoin? If uh, we have uh, now to... Um, now Francesca owns uh, 10 Bitcoins, imagine. Because I own them at the beginning and I've uh, uh, sent, it, sent it to them, mm -hmm. so her. So in the second block, uh, Francesca decides uh, to pass, uh, to give... Uh, uh, how many Bitcoins uh, do you want to give to, uh, to who? Mm, I don't know, five. Okay, so you are gonna transfer five bitcoins to three, yeah. we imagine. Okay. So we apply the same, exactly the same process to the second block, so we mine it mm -hmm. and we make it become coherent with itself, but there is one main difference between the two, the previous hash. The first one didn't have a previous hash. This one is related to the to the block number one so that the block number so when the block number one changes in any of its contents then its hash changes and the second one so will reflect these changes with the, okay. exactly and this guarantees integrity for example mm -hmm. if I change the first transaction and I say I don't want you to give um, 10 bitcoins I just want to give you one bitcoin mm -hmm. so I change this you can see that uh, pretty easy that the background became red. Why the background became red? Because the hash changed. And this hash changed. So this hash does not begin with four zeros. That's simply the process. So if we say, okay, let's take it back to, okay. bring it back to 10 bitcoins, then you can verify easily that uh, the coherence exists with the two blocks. The same process applies to the to the blocks that are uh, next. So uh, this is how basically works uh, uh, blockchain. Perfect. And um, according to your opinion, mm -hmm. uh, does the blockchain have a chance to transform uh, 
uh, the internet and uh, in general the global mm. economy? Mm. Well, I believe so. Mm. Um, this is a very um, huge term to transform the global economy and the <laughs> internet itself. Uh, well, the internet is defined as an, inf an information infrastructure, so it is uh, um, a layer on which uh, blockchain and Bitcoin uh, functions. So the internet is uh, banally the network um, that supports the transaction and the communication uh, between the peers. So I want to send 10 Bitcoin to her, I can contact uh, the peer just by having uh, uh, making an internet request. So blockchain can change uh, the internet uh, and there is a project that is based on uh, blockchain aim aiming to change uh, the internet the protocol that um, on which the uh, internet is based on um, probably this will become uh, too technical to explain mm. but uh, okay. uh, for those of you who know the basics of internet uh, it basically it, it uh, implements a protocol that is named http uh, hypertext transfer protocol and it's just a protocol like where uh, where um, your computer contacts a server and asks for a research, a research. So if I want to go to the Lewis website, I ask, I ask the Lewis website, the server of the Lewis website answers to me and gives me the web page. So this is a, a process client server, so a bidirectional communication. Mm -hmm. Using blockchain and uses the distributed property of blockchain, this project aims uh, to create multiple servers that can be contacted from multiple clients, uh, so not just uh, a bottleneck uh, from clients to one server, but multiple servers uh, that uh, are um, synchronized with the contents uh, using the distributed uh, property on blockchain. And that can be contacted by any um, client, uh, so that the advantage, the main advantage of this transformation is uh, the um, absence of bottlenecks okay. when uh, many people ask the same request. For example, if, uh, um, I don't know if some of you had this problem, but uh, personally I had, when I had to, I had to choose uh, my uh, study plan here at Lewis, mm -hmm. uh, many people uh, at uh, 11 and a half uh, midnight <laughs> started to go in the website asking the same page, web cell service in Lewis, the server came down. Why? Because... I think uh, it's a common problem. That's a yeah. common problem in information technology. Many clients ask the same request, uh, they, can, they come into a bottleneck and the server says, okay, <laughs> wait a minute, please. So this would be um, fixed by uh, an approach like this because this is distributed. So the web cell service uh, is not just uh, on the Lewis server, and in many, many servers. So this is about internet itself. But in the um, applications uh, of blockchain in other uh, fields of economy mm -hmm. um, are, for example, the legal uh, sector in which blockchain can guarantee integrity, um, distribution, publicity, timestamping and persistency to contracts, for example. So um, if you have uh, um, a company that uh, needs to sign a contract with another company and uh, this contract uh, uh, should not be registered uh, to an external authority that guarantees uh, that the contract uh, is signed um, with uh, some uh, formal requirements, you can have this uh, assurance of uh, signing integrity, distribution, publicity, timestamp, etc. by in, in your own. So just having uh, um, just calculating the hash of the entire contract, imagine the contract as a PDF with many, many pages. Mm -hmm. no? um, you want the guarantee that, uh, the guarantee that uh, um, if you sign a contract, then its content does not change uh, okay, in, uh, during the time. So you just calculate the hash of the entire PDF, for example. Um, you store it uh, into a blockchain, then you can decide which blockchain store the content to then we'll, uh, we'll focus on this aspect, but um, you calculate the hash, you store it in the blockchain and uh, this, block, this hash is then distributed to a lot of people, to all the peers that own your blockchain 
So you are um, sure that the content of your contract, if the ask does not change, if the ask changes, it means that the content has been changed. If the ask does not change, the content of the contract is uh, integral. So it is, uh, no, respects the integrity uh, property. So this uh, is uh, applied uh, to, to contracts, uh, um, for example, uh, between startups, uh, okay. uh, because they don't want to, to um, spend money and time in registering uh, their contracts to a central authority. Or, for example, the context in which uh, uh, registration is not allowed. Okay. I don't know, but... Uh, so it's very useful for legal activities in general? Yes, it is. And um, uh, how can you decide if blockchain uh, uh, as a rule, as an important rule uh, in a particular industry? Mm -hmm. As a particular rule or role? Uh, both, probably <laughs> not. <laughs> well, uh, in the industry, um, first of all, uh, the industry need to have these uh, uh, needs, uh, that are, uh, yeah. yes, these attributes uh, that uh, characterize uh, blockchain. That mm -hmm. is, if an industry wants uh, to uh, distribute uh, its contents uh, within a large variety of people, it must meet the, the property of distribution. So, for example, um, let's have a look at the sanity, mm -hmm. the, for example, the, the hospital, etc. They may want to um, preserve the records of a person mm -hmm. in uh, long lasting, and uh, they wish to um, uh, not be subjected to attacks, for example, uh, by uh, hackers or crackers or um, viruses. I refer mainly to the WannaCry attack that uh. happened uh, last week. So the Britain uh, sanity um, was attacked by this uh, virus, and now many records of people of British people uh, are now uh, not accessible mm -hmm. because uh, other, even though it could they could be backed up, um, if they are not backed up, there's a problem of uh, retrieval. Uh, so with the blockchain approach, um, people. And the, rec the records of people can be can be, be distributed to other blockchains, uh, to other chains, um, so that uh, the virus should attack each of these chains, each, each of these peers, uh, to uh, make the information uh, unavailable uh, at all worldwide. So this is a, a kind of application. And moreover, if you need to have uh, a timestamp, so a certification mm -hmm. that your act or your um, document uh, is being made uh, this time uh, of uh, at this hour and this time of period, um, blockchain guarantees you the the timestamp because when you um, when your computer sends the request to the other chains, then it attaches the current time stamp in the UTC format, the universal time format. So anyone that receives this block knows that the request has been made at, I don't know, 11 and 40 of May 2017, 22, 22 of May 2017. And moreover, the persistence, which I spoke be before, so if you want to um, uh, store your content uh, just in your computer, you are um, you can be attacked or you can damage your disk, so you can uh, lose your information. If this information is distributed, it's very easy to understand that uh, uh, the probabilities of information lost are uh, minimum in respect to just one, uh, just one um, source. And then public. Blockchains are public because they are shared with other people. Mm -hmm. So if you want your information to be public, publicly accessible, uh, for example, uh, because you are, um, uh, this is another sector, for example, mm. the intellectual property rights. Yeah. If you want your um, artifact, yeah, okay. or the, I don't know, uh, generally speaking, uh, uh, a track, music track, mm -hmm. or a picture, or um, 
something that inherits uh, your uh, world. Okay. Yes, your world or in general intellectual property mm. rights. You want this artifact to become public, okay. so that no one in the future can say this is mine. Okay. I did. I did this. So, for example, uh, there is an application that I've not put here. Mm. Okay, now this is something that I'll tell you after. Mm -hmm. um, for example, if you uh, write uh, uh, a drawing, a picture. And then you want to say, okay, this is my picture, and I don't want other artists to say that uh, this picture has been made by them. So you just uh, calculate the hash of the picture, that is a JPEG, for example, uh, very simply, and uh, you um, send this hash into the blockchain. The blockchain then knows that you did the drawing at uh, the specific time in the, the history. Uh, it uh, stores your drawing uh, into different databases so you don't have the the risk that your drawing uh, becomes lost and then it is uh, uh, public to anyone so anyone knows that you in that period of time uh, created the intellectual property right, the artifact and so you are ensured of this way so it's also a matter of security and uh, probably it's one uh, of the reasons why it's growing uh, popularity Sure. Not also in Italy, but probably all over the world. All over the world, <laughs> absolutely. Yes, yes. Security is one of the fundamental uh, principle of uh, blockchain. That is, uh, um, uh, that is um, reached with the, the richness of these uh, principles. So these principles together, combined together, bring uh, security in uh, blockchain. Security means that no one can change the or alter the content of a block without uh, reflecting, uh, without that this change is reflected or that is known by others. If you look at this example that we did before, if someone changes this block, I know pretty easy that the second block has been changed, so the entire chain is invalidated. So it's pretty easy to understand uh, how security matters. And um, um, this is a, um, a very strong characteristic that, uh, for me, you should know, is that uh, a blockchain, a generic blockchain, is just a series of blocks and uh, is not um, guaranteed to be distributed. So one blockchain is located in your hard disk, for example, on your computer, and it's just a segment of blocks. A distributed blockchain this is uh, just an example where it shows the same chain replicated three times so peer a peer b and peer c distributed blockchain with the capital letter b that is the name of the technology okay. behind the blockchain because blockchain with the lower case b is a chain of blocks simply mm -hmm. blockchain with the capital letter is the technology that Satoshi Nakamoto uh, programmed and um, uh, the, main different, uh, the main difference between uh, blockchain and a blockchain is the algorithm that distributes the chains and synchronizes the chains within the peers. So um, Satoshi Nakamoto programmed this, this algorithm um, to uh, make sure that any transaction was being uh, could be uh, stored in any peer in any peer computer, um, and this happens uh, by <coughs> searching uh, the peers that are near to your network when you input a transaction. Mm -hmm. And for example, I don't know if you use the Mule or BitTorrent or these protocols. Uh, they were all peer-to-peer uh, -peer protocols in which. Uh, there was no central institution that guaranteed the location of other servers where you downloaded videos, files from. So uh, the approach is exactly the same. Um, the software behind blockchains scans the entire network, starting from your local network, then expanding, uh, to look if there are other peers. If it finds another peer, then it contacts the peer and it says, okay, I have a new block, please attach it uh, to your chain. Looping this uh, uh, through all the, the peers makes the distribution uh, uh, principle.
So, uh, if you have some questions, uh, look on. It's here. Some curiosity. Well, for example, I can stimulate your curiosity mm -hmm. by showing this uh, platform. Okay. Um, this platform is a platform that makes you possible to store um, <clears throat> your own content. Mm -hmm. I'm not speaking about Bitcoin. Okay. So you can, um, for example, use this platform to store the contract that you want to sign with the startup or mm -hmm. uh, your medical uh, um, uh, folder into <coughs> into this platform and this platform calculates the hash of your mm -hmm. file and inserts the hash into the Bitcoin blockchain. Um, <coughs> let's speak about the difference between uh, generic blockchains uh, with capital B and the Bitcoin blockchain. Okay. Uh, Nakamoto, uh, when he programmed the algorithm, uh, um, he programmed the Bitcoin blockchain, that is uh, the amount, the different uh, chains uh, that are related only to Bitcoin. Mm. So in these chains, uh, the content is just a transaction in which we say uh, one gave uh, ten bitcoins uh, to chi, to two, for example. No, um, or we can show it better <laughs> in this way. So, anyone, for example, Darcy gave twenty-five dollars uh, to Bingley. Uh, <clears throat> this is the Bitcoin blockchain format. So it just stores information about transactions. But if you want to change the content. Uh, of this block, you can easily do this uh, putting uh, raw data here. So, for example, um, if I want to um, record the contract uh, from my startup uh, uh, between my startup and your startup, mm -hmm. we um, make a contract in which we say, I don't know, um, I build you an application, I build an application for you, okay. a mobile application for you. Uh, the time, the months uh, are, for example, free. The months of the mm -hmm. committee are free months. Uh, then uh, the amount of money is, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, two thousand dollars. Okay. And then uh, uh, the function that the application should have are function are, I don't know, login, profile, uh, whatever you want in your mobile application mm -hmm. then here we say um, date the date in which we concluded uh, mm -hmm. the contract and this is 22 may 17 at uh, 12 let's say 12 p.m. Yeah. Um, have you ever used the this system for your startup, for example? Actually, no, <laughs> <laughs> because uh, no, no, but uh, mm. probably I will uh, because I it discovered. Could be interesting, uh, yeah, it is, it is. You are a startup, so. Absolutely. This uh, is very, mm. very useful and um, probably I will use it in the near future. I discovered it uh, just uh, one month ago the, oh. the possibility to. Um, put raw data in mm -hmm. a block and then use the blockchain uh, chain to distribute it. Okay. So this is example, this example I, I'm going to explain is to let you understand that you can write any content and you don't, don't have to um, create your own blockchain network. So you don't have to, uh, for example, if you um, want to create a startup that uh, makes just a verification of contracts, you don't have to uh, create the software that contacts any other peer, um, um, making them recording the blocks in their computers. You can use the existent uh, blockchain that was created by Nakamoto for Bitcoin and store your uh, information, your raw information, into its uh, blockchain. Mm -hmm. This guarantees you the presence of your information into a network of more than uh, 5,000 peers, actually. So it's very distributed. So you have uh, the assuredness uh, that your content uh, is not a change uh, from me and her, but worldwide. So you can say, okay, I want a contract, I mm -hmm. want to make this contract, mine the block, 
the mining uh, it's a process uh, that uh, computationally uh, is not pretty easy so because uh, the computers uh, tries any number from 1 to infinite uh, that uh, um, creates the hash with four zeros so uh, this uh, is um, a low number uh, rel relatively low number but uh, mm. uh, you can um, you can have situations in which the number has uh, um, six, seven, eight digits, More digits so yeah. it becomes slower uh, but anyway then in the first contract uh, now it's uh, uh, respect the integrity and uh, if you want for example uh, to uh, apply um, an update to the contract change mm -hmm. it uh, mm -hmm. you can say no the contract uh, um, will be run on two months for example because three months uh, is uh, too much mm -hmm. you don't have to change it here because change it in the first block will invalidate the entire chain so uh, if someone other than you changes uh, the mouse uh, in the contract, uh, then you know that someone has made this change. But if you want to change uh, the, the content of your block, uh, you just have to uh, create another block, changing its properties, uh, remind it, uh, and then you have two blocks uh, that are coherent with themselves and in the chain. As you can see now, okay, the algorithm uh, took uh, five six seconds uh, because the nuns uh, is uh, higher and you can uh, keep on this way uh, changing your uh, content uh, your contract content finally if you change something here the chain becomes so you have nothing. blocks uh, according to the, the changes mm -hmm. yes okay this is can be an example for mm -hmm. example in my, in my thesis now, hmm. I am uh, proposing uh, it uh, in the public administration, for example, ah. because public administration need to sign acts and exchange these acts for, um, between different administrations. For example, in, Ita in Italy, we have uh, um, Corte dei Conti, that is uh, uh, the institution that controls uh, that the balance, the state balance, uh, um, is uh, exactly uh, well does not have uh, modification does it respects some principles uh, in, in the shape and in the context of uh, uh, the balance itself so the various entities uh, that uh, pre allocate uh, amount of public amount of monies um, to uh, their different contracts then at the end of the year should communicate these uh, amounts to the Corte dei Conti this process uh, can be easily um, translated uh, into a distributed technology uh, using blockchain because uh, you can calculate the hash of each contract that each administration uh, concludes uh, with a third party provider. For example, if uh, uh, Ministerio della Salute wants to acquire, uh, want to purchase a service from uh, Telecom Italia, I imagine. He makes, a, he makes a contract with Telecom Italia stating that uh, uh, in the next uh, three months uh, uh, they want to be delivered, I don't know, uh, many gigabytes of connectivity, internet connectivity. Uh, and it uh, attaches the amount uh, in this uh, block, in this contract, uh, that, then, that then becomes a block. So you calculate the hash of the contract, uh, you put it in the blockchain, and then uh, anyone uh, at the end of the year can verify uh, that the contract was not altered. If someone inside the Minister the Ministerio della Salute or outside changes uh, the contract uh, not having the authority to change it, it, this will be reflected uh, into the blockchain because at the end of the year uh, the controller, for example Conte de Gonti, goes back to the blockchain and looks, uh, okay, this contract does not uh, um, hashes uh, with the hash I have. So for example, he calculates the, um, the hash of the new contract uh, that he received from the minister. If it is uh, uh, different from the hash that is present at blockchain, it's easy to understand that you the contract will have problem. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> okay. So this is another application, but uh, uh, you can uh, imagine many, many applications that are related to the principle distribution, 
publicity, time stamping, and the persistency. Perfect. Thank you, Luca. Thank you. If you want to ask something, uh, we are free people, so <laughs> it's no problem. Okay, don't be shy. <laughs> Mm -hmm. It depends on how the administration decides to implement the technology. The publicity here uh, means that if you go to blockchain.info or block explorer, that do two website that shows you um, the entire all the blocks that are um, being uh, inserted into the blockchain you can look uh, for one block that is uh, uh, identified by its hash that is univoc in uh, all the blockchain you click in one of its and it show you the uh, content of the block so if the Ministerio della Salute decides to put the entire content the entire contract in this block you can view the entire contract here so it becomes uh, even a, a way to um, exactly to reach transparency for example this is a transaction made from this person to these two person to these two people uh, in bitcoin a transaction is uh, um, contains the addresses of the people who are sending and receiving the transactions so this uh, is the address that identifies uh, one and one wallet uh, hold by one person um, and this is the amount uh, transferred so this person uh, imagine person uh, a is transferring uh, 0.70 bitcoins uh, mm -hmm. uh, to these other people 0.70 bitcoins uh, is a very high amount of money mm -hmm. and now the yeah you can uh, you Probably you see O dot something um, and you imagine okay this uh, is not too much. But if you go to the quotation of Bitcoin actually, ah, let's see. <laughs> you can imagine that the one Bitcoin is one thousand US dollars, so uh -huh. it's not so. It's very, it's a very high amount of money. It's transferring uh, more or less, uh, let's say, two, one, three, oh, there's a tanta. It's one thousand fifty, uh, more or less fifty dollars yeah. transferred to these two people. Okay. <clears throat> it depends exactly on what you put inside the, the data. Exactly. And if you want, you can put just the hash into the block. So, for example, your contract is made of this content, months, amount, etc. You can put this and this becomes uh, publicly available. But if you calculate the hash of this, for example, with uh, uh, an online uh, hasher, for example, SHA256 online calculator, you put the data that you have here, here in the text box. You calculate the hash. Ash is a generic way to synthesize, to summarize data into a string that is very little. So, B blockchain ashes are a particular kind of ashes that began with 4 0. I, have, I, don't, uh, I didn't use uh, the hash of the block uh, to identify your information because it contains uh, not only your information but even the information of the previous block and uh, the nouns and the number of the block. So. It, no, it does not just identify your contract, but those information 
uh, moreover than your content. So I calculate another hash and just hashes the content that you want to become private. You just copy this hash into the block here, you mine it, and then you have a block that contains just this hash. And you cannot understand what is uh, the text behind this hash, but you have the um, certainty, the, assur the assurance that uh, um, only and only this content uh, is uh, cryptographically related to this hash. If you change, for example, a new line, just a new line creates an hash that is different from the one that we have made. I can show you this by... Uh, I've copied the previous hash here. Okay, I mined it, so the block is now green. Now I put uh, uh, a space and a new, new line in the text box. I calculate the new hash, it becomes with 1. 1D, 1O, etc. I put it here, you just see that this becomes with A8, so it's pretty different, but the background becomes red, it means that the content has been changed. So here you can, uh, if you synthesize, summarize your information into um, an hash, then your information becomes private. And just you can, um, can know that uh, just you know that the, your information is the one. Obviously, yeah. the only possible effect of the hash I can, if I, try, if I found, I find this hash, I can change the hash of the internet. Mm -hmm. I, I can, so obviously. Uh, Go back to the content. No, this is a mathematical property that identifies the hashes. Okay. Yes, the definition of a hash is uh, exactly. Uh, a synthesizer that cannot be uh, re re engineered, so you cannot go back. Sure. Public register, you mean asset tracking? Or? Mm -hmm. Sure, uh, for example, in the public sector or uh, Yes, for example, a public registry that comes to my mind is uh, uh, that I don't know how to say it in English, but uh, Catasto in Italia is the registry that uh, uh, stores the information about your houses or your properties in the physical world. And this uh, registry is made of uh, documents that are issued by the Catasto offices, mm -hmm. and these documents uh, contain uh, the name and the anagraphic of the owner, the map of your house, for example, and some particular information that identifies your property. Now, actually, this information is stored into a physical uh, um, location in each uh, um, city. So each uh, city office has its own uh, office. Um, using blockchain, you can virtualize the content. Virtualizing the content means that you can or create a PDF, so just scan the act and you're done. So you just scan the act, you calculate the hash, and you put into the into the blockchain. Uh, if you want to um, reach a digital transformation, uh, that is another theme of my thesis. <laughs> you should not just uh, scan your act, but you should translate and codify your information that are written in your act in a way that computers can understand this information. For example, the map can then become an, uh, um, a JPEG, a picture. The anagraphic information can become records that identify, for example, name, surname, in a uh, codified way, so that software can understand this. Then you calculate the hash of the uh, PDF or the new conceptualization, uh, and you store the hash here. If you want it to become private, you store it here. If you want it to become public, you store it as a public document. Then you use a platform like this, but you can use uh, other platforms that... This is just a platform that sends your hash into the blockchain, the generic blockchain that is the... not the generic, sorry, the Bitcoin blockchain. Uh, for example, here the... 
Okay, so um, if you look at what at what this platform does, uh, this generates a blockchain receipt for each record, and it puts the receipt into the Bitcoin uh, blockchain. So any peer in the world know that your house is exactly your house, and it, it is made by I don't know three uh, rooms, uh, one kitchen uh, that is located in this way, etc. And then, historically, in the future, if you have to prove that your house is actually yours, you own it, you just look at the blockchain, you look at the hash, mm -hmm. you have your own copy of the... Uh, if you publish uh, the entire content, then you, you have just to search for the hash, retrieve the content and show it to someone it's else. quite simple. Quite simple. If you put it privately, you need to store in your database, local database, the, con the original content, then you compare the ashes and you understand that the ashes are exactly the same. Uh, in the United States, some uh, institutions are actually um, experimentando, uh, testing, Test eh? <laughs> testing the, um, the um, record of data in uh, uh, form that is uh, exactly the same form used by blockchain. So experimentations are actually being made in the United States about assets, uh, assets tracking.